We back, y'all. Um, here it is, the Real Housewives of Atlanta season nine, the premiere. Let's just get right into it, cause it was very eventful. All the shade, everything. You know what I'm saying? Let's just get right into it now. We're gonna start off with shit that's not really important. That's Candy and Todd. We were sitting up here looking at Candy and Todd and the baby. Um, at this point in time at the show, Ace is now five months old, and he looks just like Riley to me. He looked like a baby Riley to me. And um, let me just tell y'all something as I was watching this scene. I can already tell that um, Toddler is really going to annoy the shit out of me this whole season because he's so all these men that's I just cannot stand men that is so hell bent on being on on masculinity. You know what I mean? Like they always got to do everything by the book. It always got to be a man law, some shit like that. He just oh, he just hyper masculine to me, and he just really he just annoys me with that. And then you know, Candy being so submissive to his ass, it's just like a 1960s marriage to me. Am I the only one that feels that way? I mean, granted. I am happy for Candy. Um, Candy has always been my favorite housewife out of any motherfucking body on this whole fucking show. It was always Candy. And um, I'm happy that she's happy. But this damn marriage between her and Todd just feel like a 1965 marriage if you ask me. That's just my personal opinion though. My personal opinion. That's just me. According to me, Scotty. In the words of Cadillac Kimberly. I just feel like that's a 1965 marriage. He's, he's the Fred Flintstone and she's the fucking Wilma. That's just how I feel. But, um, yeah. Getting past her ass. Let's get into Chateau Charest. Now, it's been so many years. Like, we've been waiting on Chateau Charest since Jesus was a fucking baby, okay? And when we got up in that motherfucker, all I could say was, God damn. Like... As, as long as it took, because you know, it took her uh, like a couple of centuries to get this house together. But from the way it looks, it looks beautiful. And sometimes it has to take you a half a century to get a house where you need it to be. And it looks great. It really does. I cannot wait till this, till this properly finished and furnished and then furnished and everything like that. But it looks nice. So we go over to, um, to the ditch, which is um, more work needed manner. And um, her house, I mean, honestly, Ken's house really isn't a bad house. And um, it's not a bad looking house. But if I would pick a house, I would pick Chateau Charest over Ditch Manor. That's just my personal opinion. And I got nothing to do with me hating on Kenya or nothing like that. But, you know, Kenya just came out the gate throwing shade. But she, but she throws shade all the time. And then when somebody takes a rock and throw it in her ass, you know, instead of just throwing shade and somebody take a whole tree and throw it in her ass, she gets ready to cry about it sometimes. But you know what? This is just the first episode, y'all, so I'm not going to really just dig into Kenya's ass like that. You know what I mean? I'm going to give every, I'm going to start off right and give everybody a motherfucking chance. But girl, I just didn't quite understand um this whole housewarming thing because your house ain't nowhere near finished so i just didn't understand it but we're gonna get into that shit later so let's talk about cynthia okay now cynthia wants to um file for a divorce against peter and i must and i must say this it's not like we didn't see this coming we didn't, it's not like we didn't see this coming six years ago when they first got married when they first came on the show it's not like we didn't see it coming i mean peter is a fucking asshole and i honestly used to always feel like peter used to be cynthia ass because she's was she seems so scared of peter to me the way he curses her and rolls his damn neck and shit like i just always felt like he wasn't shit and um i even though i don't fuck with cynthia at all i don't like cynthia period but i just feel like um, she deserves so much better than him, in my personal opinion. I mean, like I said, y'all, I don't fuck with Cynthia Bailey, period. I don't fuck with that bitch. I don't fuck with her, period. But I can, I know that somebody deserves better, and she deserves much better than Peter. She's she's a beautiful woman. Peter look like a damn great by the face. I mean, I just feel like she should, she should get so much better. I mean, as beautiful as she is at her age and youthful as she looks, she can find her a good man and a man that's going to treat her right. Not a man that's going to dig into the into the little pockets that she already got. You know what I'm saying? And then you know she's saying she don't want no alimony. Girl, we know you don't want no alimony because you know Peter ain't got no fucking money to give you no fucking alimony. You know what I mean? 
So I understand, girl. I understand. You don't want to take the little money that he already got. You know what I mean? You you don't want to take the little bit of, of minimum wage that he already fucking got. You don't want to take all that from him. You know what I mean? So I understand. And she look really nice up in there with that with them brains and that and shit. You know, Cynthia is a good looking woman. I'm not gonna take nothing from her on it. She is. Although I can't stand that bitch. She is a good looking um woman, especially for her age. So we get into Phaedra. Portia comes over to the house and you know honestly y'all y'all can say I know a lot of people don't like Portia and I know a lot of people don't like Phaedra but when you put the two of them together it's fucking hilarious in my opinion you know what I mean the Phaedra ain't really been my motherfucking cup of Louisiana tea in a while but when she get with when she get with Portia I feel like the inner trash comes out in her and I'm all for her inner trash to come out because this fake ass southern belly mm -hmm, shit that she has been pulling for all these years I ain't here for it I, I, I want to see Trashtra I don't want to see the sip and see Phaedra none of that shit I want to see Trashtra that's what the fuck I want to see so you know they're sitting up there talking about Phaedra's dating life and you know how she's been trying to get a divorce with Apollo and how it's been taking a very long time it's been very drawn out because Apollo don't want the, the don't want the divorce but you know I still feel like Phaedra kind of bailed out on this man when he really needed her the most because Phaedra did know what type of fucking felon she married. That's just my personal opinion. Like, you knew what type of man he was before you married him and before you laid down and had children with him. So now that he's embarrassed the fuck out of you, you can't stand firm in your shit. You can't, you can't smell like the shit that you got to stand in. You know what I mean? And once he embarrassed your ass, that's when you want the, you know want to be want to run for it run for it run that's when you want to do that and i just don't agree with that like if you was gonna love that man through sickness and health through trials and tribulation you should have been there with him through his trials and tribulation but i mean at the end of the day this man lied to you he did all sorts of shit to you and you still stuck by him but other than that y'all i mean that's just my personal opinion i just felt like she divorced an apollo to save face that's just my personal opinion shoot me for saying that um well, um, well, um, so then after she, they was talking about that, they talking about a housewarming that King is having, um, the shady ass invitation that she sent. And Portia was obviously not invited, so Phaedra decided to bring Portia as her plus one. So then, speaking of Portia, she goes into her, um, to her therapy session. And honestly, you know, a lot of people call Portia a victim. She never takes accountability for her actions or anything like that. But beyond all of that, when she was sitting around here talking about her past with school bullying, going through middle school and high school with the bullying shit, I honestly felt her pain because I've always been an advocate for uh, for, for being against school bullying because I have been through school bullying. I went through the same thing from 4th grade, 5th grade, 6th grade, 7th grade. 8th grade, ninth grade to fucking 10th grade. I went through school bullying. I had a battle wanting to commit suicide. I had a battle bringing weapons to school and, 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 you know, making hit lists and shit like that, which is why my anger as an adult became even worse. My temper wasn't shit to play with when I got older. But I'm at a better place and I'm still trying to work on my anger and work on my temper. But that's where my anger stemmed from was me being bullied in school because, you know, it's hard to go to school. You know, children are very cruel and children will find anything that's wrong with you. When I was going to school I didn't have to struggle for shit. My mama kept me in name brand clothes. But the name brand clothes didn't stop them from fucking with me. It was just something about me that they just didn't like. You know, they just they just found something wrong with me. And they just decided to pick on me and just tease me because of my feminine man mannerisms and shit like that. And on top of that, you know what I'm saying? It was just, that's basically what it was. I was a boy. I had a lot of feminine man uh, mannerisms. Um, some feminine mannerisms that I've grown out of more more than others. And I always hung around with the females all the time. And it's just, you know, they used to tease me for that. And sometimes it got physical. You know, all these big ass dudes trying to fight me and shit like that. That shit was scary and I didn't have a voice then. So I understand where she coming from. So, um... So, Kenya calls Sheree because she didn't know where to send her invite to. She didn't know whether she should send it to a cardboard box or send it to the nearest Dollar General, um, send it to Fred, send it to the nearest gas station, um, restroom where Sheree may be laying her head at. You know, you never know. And, um, you know, I must say that Sheree's daughter, Tierra, is 
so pretty to me. She's always been a pretty girl to me. I don't know what it is about Tear, but she's pretty. Very natural looking to me. Like, she's very pretty. Um, but it was so funny when Sheree hung up in Kenya Face. It was that shit was fucking hilarious. I can't lie to you. So Cynthia and Peter, they had this awkward ass FaceTime and um Cynthia noted her fucking heart drop when she, when Peter said she, he was with his new girlfriend. And Peter is an asshole. You know what I mean? Like, Cynthia, just move the fuck on, dog. Move on. You don't deserve, Peter don't deserve you, period. So just move the fuck on, baby. Because it, it's just pretty clear that Peter always had to take you for a joke. And on top of that, your marriage was doomed from the moment your mom and your sister tried to hide the motherfucking marriage certificate and everything to keep y'all from getting married. And that will always be the funniest moment. One of the funniest moments on Housewives history in my motherfucking opinion. That shit was fucking hilarious. Um, let's get into the housewarming. Now, apparently, Kenya and Matt aren't together anymore as the show goes on. They ain't together no more. He kicked in her door and all sorts of shit. And you know... Kenya ain't my favorite person. Everybody knows that, but I wanted her to be happy because, you know, it, it, you know, we can all poke fun and laugh at her because she ain't got no man. I mean, I ain't got one either, so I can't really poke fun in her ass. But at the end of the day, you want to see people happy, especially people that yearns for that. And she yearns to be happy. And she yearns for love and all of that good stuff. So I was happy for her, to be honest. But, you know, sometimes it's like, if a motherfucker ain't going to do you right, then a motherfucker just ain't going to do you right. You know what I'm saying? That's how I feel about it. So, um, so yeah, we get into um this house warming. And the house ain't even finished. And my thing about it is she's so worried about what Sheree going to think. And Kenya, why the fuck are you so damn insecure? You you trying so hard to show that you done whoop Sheree ass in this house war and all of this shit. And your shit ain't even done. Why would you have a fucking house warming? When more mana ain't motherfucking finished, you are so insecure about this ditch that you living in that you just don't even realize what's really important. If you want to unveil your house, let the shit be finished so everybody can see it. I don't want Sheree to come in. At this point, fuck Sheree. This is about your motherfucking ditch. You know what I'm saying? And you worked hard for this ditch. So make sure that your ditch is fucking on point when a bitch come in. You know what I mean? But you giving people, you so insecure that you don't even realize that you're giving people more of a reason to talk. Sheree walks up throwing shade. When I tell you that she was fucking hilarious, like her and Kenya Shade is very fucking hilarious. Like I can't even be mad at that. They are very hilarious when they're throwing shade. Like she said this whole house was her damn master suite. I was so tickled. At that, and Kenya was like, Make sure you're throwing stones from your own house and not an apartment building or something. She said, and I was so tipped. I'm like, Kenya, Sheree, they are hilarious. I swear they are hilarious. Um, you know, there was gifts brought, candy was late as usual. Next thing you know, Sheree asked, Was Portia invited? And here go Kenya, here go Kenya talking about she wanted to be saving her own home. Let me just tell y'all this, y'all. To me, Portia is not a fucking threat. Honestly, the way y'all come for this girl and call her dumb and she's childish and she this. Why are y'all acting like she's such a danger to y'all? Honestly. Like, I just don't feel like she's a threat. Honestly. I don't give a fuck. Like, as much shit as I talk and as many times as I've gotten into altercations with people in the past, do y'all really see me as a threat? I highly fucking doubt y'all see me as one. So stop it with the fuck shit. Stop it with the victim act. You know what I mean? Like, that girl ain't no danger to you. You know what I mean? You just talk shit and you got handled. That's all the fuck it was. You ran up, got done up. That's pretty much what it was. Same thing with Cynthia. Same, I don't know what happened with Jamie, but same thing with y'all. Y'all, y'all just need to stop. That's just how I feel. Like, stop making that girl out to be some violent monster. Because I just don't see that, honestly. I just don't. I can see if it was somebody like Jocelyn. But who wants to fight folks all the time. Who literally walks through the streets looking for a fight. But Portia, I just don't see that. I'm sorry. Um. So, as she was saying that, that's when Phaedra and Portia was on their way. And the next thing you know, we get to the house with one party. When Portia walked through that door, Sheree was here for the mess. She was here for it, baby. She was just sitting on her, sipping on her drink, just laughing her motherfucking ass off. I said, Sheree is messy as a motherfucker. But y'all, that's um, all I got. Um, It's going to be a to be continued for next episode. So we're going to see about that. Um, But it was a pretty decent episode. It wasn't nothing mind-blowing, but it is the premiere. So the first 
two, three episodes probably gonna be decent until we get to the real tea. So that's all I gotta say, y'all. I gotta go um and watch American Mad Medicine um at this point in time so I can make a review for that later on. And I'm out of here, y'all. Peace. Chateau Charade, bitch.